Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the process of building the custom bookshelves that you see behind me. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you will have seen in the past two-ish years a massive bookshelf cleanup. I used to have basically a whole apartment with six tall Billy bookcases, all in one room, very library-esque. You know, so It's finished, it's finished, finished, finished. Look, 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 look. And then I moved into this house. So we're in like the peak of the roof. And that meant that most of the Billy bookcases didn't fit up here. Welcome to my office, which is Box Mountain right now. basically every video I've produced in the past year and a bit, there's been a background that was cluttered and, and everything was all janky and there was no clean visual lines. And I knew that to get this to be functional that I was going to have to build custom bookshelves. So the first thing that I did was save up because even though this looks very simple, the rails for this are very expensive and wood right now is very expensive. So it took about a year of saving to save up for what looks very simple. <laughs> so that was the first step, saving up. So once I had achieved that, I shopped around. I ended up buying a rail system through Lee Valley. So essentially I have uh, metal rails and then you hook a bracket into it and then you put a piece of wood on top and you have shelves. Good morning. So today my dad is going with me to pick up the lumber um, and I am anxious. <laughs> this is the first thing I'm building by myself. So I did an online chat uh, just to make sure like which yards had the amount of wood I needed in stock. Um, and so then they advised me to call directly to have it like cut so I could pick it up. And then that person didn't mention that there was naughty pine and there was another word that he used, but basically not naughty pine. And he was like, are you painting it or are you staining it? And I was like, I'm doing nothing to it. My plan was just to build with it in its sort of natural state. And he was like, all right, why don't you come in and look at it? Now it's not going to be cut. It's not just a matter of picking it up. It's a matter of looking at it and having them cut it. <sighs> I've been saving up for a year for this. Wood is very expensive right now and now there are so many options and like if I fuck it up, I've spent a lot of money <laughs> to fuck it up. But I kind of don't want to involve like a real adult because I want to do it myself like I have to start somewhere with these DIY things that I want to do. I'm leaving at 11 30 to go to my parents so that my dad and I can drive together because it won't fit in my car like I don't think it's a good idea to drive with like 12 feet of wood hanging out of the back of a car in the winter. I don't know I just want to I want to do it. I want to get started. I hate the waiting. I haven't even opened the box of rails that came like two weeks ago. Um, I ordered those at the beginning of February so that they would 100% be here. And I'm realizing that I probably should have opened the box then to make sure that like all the pieces are there. We're just gonna pray that everything came together, everything went right, and if it didn't, I'm gonna be doing some driving, finding a, a Lee Valley, I guess. <laughs> this, this is why I feel like I need a real adult. So 
So the wood is here. Um, that's the only place we can store it. We're going to try getting one up the stairs. Okay, so we ran into some snags. I opened up the box from Lee Valley and what I had paid for was not what they shipped. So I paid for a, a system of rails and brackets and I received the brackets and the rails for the 78 inch ones, but the different different rails for um, the 48 inch ones and so I thought that I had made a mistake ordering but then we went to a Lee Valley um, in Burlington like a physical location should have just gone there to begin with um, and thankfully they had six of the exact rails that I needed in the system the last six in the store um, and they took back the wrong ones that were shipped. So, uh, Miles is out buying longer screws because we bought uh, one inch screws this morning when we went to get a stud finder and we probably should get longer ones. So now I'm currently peeling the stickers off of the rails. It's stuff like this that makes me feel like, like a, not an adult. <laughs> Where it's like a real adult would have done that. Also, Bosef hates everything about this process. Uh, he is currently in his crate for his safety and ours, I suppose. The next thing that we have to see is if the walls are perfectly 11 feet 2 inches as they were when I measured them. And that we don't need like a smidgen, a smidgen off of each of the pieces of wood that I bought. At this moment, fingers crossed, there are no other hitches in this plan. So here is my current view. I'm standing in the corner of my office. <sighs> oh man. <laughs> this is one of those moments where I'm really faced with how much stuff I have. And uh, I'm going to be doing some decluttering today. All right, so mistakes were made on my part. Um, so I measured the walls. They are 11 feet, two inches, and I wanted the boards tight to the walls, but I kind of sort of forgot that the old house is warped. Um, so the room is not square perfectly in any direction. And so we have to take like literally less than a quarter of an inch off all of these boards to make them fit flush. So Miles is off borrowing a saw. He's going to pick up a saw from a friend so that we can cut a wee bit off. Literally everything, like every step, there has been something wrong and I feel like that should make him poop. <laughs> this is my first like DIY. Here's the other thing that happened. Okay, so we we didn't have a stud right here on the end, so we decided to put in anchors, but the drywall is so shit that uh, the anchors just rip out when you try and put a screw into them, which is not how anchors are supposed to work. So then we moved over to the studs. So these two rails are very close together. Put light things only on that end of the bookshelf, I guess. 
And at some point, I now have to take the anchors out and, uh, I guess, patch and paint, which is not uh, initially part of this project, but uh, is now part of this project. See, it's just not sitting flat. It's just a little bit too big because the walls are a little bit not square, especially this corner. This whole corner steps down because whatever they did to try and level the floor, they didn't extend it into that corner, really. There's, like, pieces of cardboard under that instead of, um, well, what's under here? Yeah, there's cardboard and there's, like, a layer of cement and, like, foil, um, and they did not extend it into that corner. So the, the care with which that they finished this room is just like indicative of the the whole experience of working in this room so so yeah i'm feeling a little defeated and like i made a mess and like i need a real adult <laughs> but i mean this is how you learn right you learn by making mistakes unfortunately this is also probably the most expensive project i've ever taken on by myself like without a real adult. Miles is here too, obviously. But this is the most expensive project without like the supervision of a dad, both of whom have like construction experiences and businesses. It's fine. It's fine. All right, here we go. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> they are janky. But they are mine. I'm now excited to put some shit on them. It's gonna be good.
that brings me to the end of this process. What did I learn? One, stud finders are a good investment. <laughs> if you're going to be doing some DIY projects, it's probably worth it to have one. If you're going to build something like this, because they're holding so much weight, they definitely want to go into studs, opposed to into drywall. The second thing that I learned, I think especially if you have an old house that nothing is going to be level. We leveled everything. It turns out that the door frame is not level. The way that the house has settled, if we had just gone by eye, we would have had some real, real fucked upness. So right now the, the door and the shelves are sort of from each other, but the shelves themselves are level, and that's that's the important part. A level is also a great investment if you're going to do some DIY projects. I am really pleased with how they turned out. They look quite simple, but like the fact that I have clean visual lines behind me is so lovely. I know that there's absolutely no order to this, and so I will be doing some organization videos, I will be doing some like tours, and I wanna do some themed videos around this. So the one thing that I wanted to mention was uh, when I first put this together, I was actually really unhappy with it. Um, that first night that everything was up, um, I was actually like weeping a little bit because it wasn't, like I imagined myself being ecstatic with this project and I wasn't. And I realized that part of it was like shame and guilt um, about having so much stuff. So I feel like there are maybe some videos to be had, uh, to be made about me personally reckoning with the collection that I have, reckoning with the acquisition of items. Yeah, once I sort of sat with that feeling of like not happiness, um, I realized that it was shame and guilt because uh, everything that you see on this side of the screen, almost everything is an unread book. Because of how they were packed into Billy bookcases before, other bookcases, like when they were in that, that Ikea squared bookcase, there were three or four rows deep of unread books. In spreading them all out like this, I'm able to see what I have acquired. It almost feels like a hoard. I have to sit with the discomfort of feeling like I have done something bad. While I was putting my red books away, I was unhauling. I actually have a box and two bags full of books that I will be unhauling. I was quite ruthless, uh, asking myself, will I read it again? Is it important to me for some sort of video? Could I see myself referencing it again? And I would like to continue to be quite ruthless. The other thing that I have in here, and I showed it in the finished footage of this video, is I'm a crafty person. I love to crochet, I love to paint and draw, and I have acquired a ton of yarn. Just like with the books, as I'm doing the snow by year, um, I realized that I would impulse purchase with sales because if you are a crafter, you know that art supplies can be quite expensive. But you know what's more expensive? Is buying craft supplies that like expire before you get to them. I would be saving more money in the long run to buy craft supplies as I have a project in mind um, and use them while they are good opposed to having paints dry out, having washi tape dry up and be unstickable, having my taste in yarn change. At, at the end of doing this project, am I happy with the shelves themselves? Yes. I have this personal um, in pulling everything apart, touching it all, and, and being forced to reckon with it, I'm also being forced to reckon with my consumption of products, my consumerism, my participation in <laughs> the market and what I am doing. There are some videos, I think, in my future about my purchasing habits, how I want to deal with this, how I want to tackle this TBR. I'm gonna personally deal with the craft stuff. I don't, that doesn't belong on this channel, but know that as much as I am reckoning with my overconsumption of books, I am also dealing in the same way with my overconsumption of other hobbies. Look forward to some bookish content dealing with this TBR in the next year. 
or two or three because I think that's about, I think there are more books here than I thought. I thought I had about two years worth of unread books. Before we go, I have to thank my patrons who make videos like this possible. Obviously a portion of Patreon funds every month for the past little bit. I took a small chunk and that went into savings for these shelves. So patrons are part of how I was able to save up for an aesthetic background for these videos. So thank you patrons. By the time that YouTube sees this, the drop in book club for April is A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. I host two book clubs with my patrons. One is patron exclusive, it's a Stephen King book club, and for that at the end of March we're reading The Dead Zone and we will be discussing The Dead Zone. Stephen King is patron exclusive, but the book club that's open to everyone will be meeting at the end of April, and that is a small book club book, and they're all tiny reads that my patrons submit and vote on, and what has won for April is A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. This has been on my radar for a while. I think it's technically non-fiction, but from what I'm told, it's sort of narrative non-fiction, so sort of interesting in terms of format, it's one that I never encountered in my degrees. So I did a literature degree and a gender studies degree, and I never encountered this sort of foundational feminist text in either degree. So I'm excited to read this. I'm excited to see what Virginia Woolf has to say. I'm excited to think about space, especially because this whole video has been about creating a space for myself to work in, right? Like, this is the room in which I work my nine to five. This is the room in which I work on any creative projects. Um, it's a space in which I'm allowed to be as messy and free, right? Like, it's for free expression, not for good impressions in this room, right? It's this creative space. And so I'm excited to see what Virginia Woolf has to say about creative spaces um, and having our own space to be creative in. And I'm sure that there will be some critiques about class and privilege alongside that. So if you are interested in joining along, um, please do. I will be posting about it and asking some questions on Instagram about it. My Instagram is linked down below. Thank you all so much for following me on this journey. Look forward to more bookish content in the future. I hope you are doing well, that you are staying safe, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!